Hey, I try to put the I try to put this in front of the um, webcam, kind of, so that way I'm kind of looking like I'm looking at the camera this time. So I don't know if it's gonna work, but there's a reason that I wanted to. I'm on YouTube and here because one thing I like about the YouTube, especially when I'm like talking about stuff that needs to be put in. I don't know, a safe. Uh, it's good to have something that can record or whatever. So I'm purposely going live on here and on YouTube um, because I definitely want to make sure that exactly what I said is exactly what I said. So um, tired of people twisting my shit. Yes, I'm on I'm on YouTube too. You, you like it over there better. It's a lot quieter, just so you know. The the comments don't fly around. It's not nearly as many people. Uh, there's like a tenth of the amount of people over on YouTube. And that's why I told that's why I told originally that I didn't want to go on YouTube because I just feel like nobody uses YouTube. But I like that it I like that it um records your lives. So I'm I'm doing that. Um yes, and uh, YouTube is also gonna have replays. So if you need to go back and see it, then you can go back and see it. Um, so there is a lot of things that I am going to talk about tonight, like a lot of stuff I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, I do want to set one thing straight just, just to get it out of the way, just to get it out of the way. Um, <clears throat> apparently, I was semi-summoned, and by semi-summoned, I have to I have to announce that um, I got a screenshot that somebody sent me from somebody who else else who is live saying that I sent her the link. Let's see if she'll come in. I never got a link on this count. On the other count, I never got a fucking link. Number one, I never got a fucking link. So I don't know what you're talking about. But number two, no, I wouldn't. And it's not because of anything other than I'm tired of being talked at. I'm tired of being talked at. I can I can do my own lives in my own time. Um this live is not going to be uh, to discuss Natasha Cooper. Okay, this is going to be to discuss April. Now, Natasha can go over there and run her mouth about me. Apparently, she put out a post saying that she was discussing Ryan and her minions. Discuss away. You're small potatoes. Now, I don't give a fuck. Um, you found my YouTube? Good, nice. Um, she can say whatever the fuck she wants. Um, her 785 call-out videos on YouTube tell me more than I need to know. She wants to, she wants to just dissect me, let her do it. Um, okay, here you are, nice. Hold on a second. Um, there we go. So, she can, she can go talk, she can do whatever she wants. I, I really don't give a shit. Um, I want to talk about, um, I want, I want to talk about April's, uh, she put up two, not, uh, <laughs> She put up two um, books. Um, and, and first of all, can I just say, the first book was infuriating, and I discussed that earlier. The second book, um, I, I have to laugh because, honestly, um, I feel like a welfare check needs to be done because <laughs> she was writing it in first and third person. This is why you can't sell a book. She she went between I and we. She she I don't know if she thought she was one person, two people. She probably thinks she's a goddamn world. I'm not sure which. But trying to read this post, um, it was even longer 
and even more agitating than the first one. Yes, Brandy, apparently it's a new post. It is a new post. Yes, um, she did another one. And when I tell you, okay, guys, no, I, I have to explain to you something, okay? I'm going to show TikTok first. Hold on, because it's it's it, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show TikTok first. <laughs> when I say, oh shit, hold on, I, I bumped into somebody else's. Hold on. When I say that this is wild, okay. No, 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 no. I I, I don't know how to explain this to you. Now I'm gonna show YouTube first. Hold on. I can show you both at the same time. That's one post. That's her post. That's a whole ass post. That's a whole ass post. That that that's that's the post, you guys. I'm 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 dead ass serious. I'm dead ass serious. That's one post. Yeah. But you have me, and we're gonna talk about it. Now I'm going to obviously um kind of just talk about uh bits and pieces because holy shit. <laughs> because holy shit. Um but, um, yeah, so we're going to talk about that real quick. Uh, so they're all active while I was at work. Congratulations. I don't give a fuck. Some of us actually have jobs. Okay. I'm definitely going to skip, you know, I'm not reading all of this. My brain will melt. Um, but so that, that is all one post. So, well, yeah, not real quick. All right, first of all, we're, we're going to set some things straight. I have this recording on YouTube. Um, once you let Tori listen to this recorded phone call, you'll play it for everyone. Oh, Tori's in here. Just get in here. No, you know what? Number one, you said it's like a two-hour phone call. You can play parts of it, though. Okay, get up in my live. I'll play it for you. Tori, Tori's, uh, Tori was in here. She, Tori's going to come up. Tori's going to talk. Um, so... Uh, you could definitely just play it for everybody. We'll just grab the popcorn, you know. So basically, what we're gonna do at this point is I, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of this. So in the first sentence, in the first sent, in the first one, two, three, four, five, in the first six words, she doxes me again. Can I just say that? I find that hilarious. By the way, have fun. Use my name as much as you want, April. It won't be mine in about two weeks. <laughs> It won't be mine in two weeks, so use it all you want. You can you, know, you can rent that shit, buy that shit in two weeks, and it ain't going to be mine anyway. And this is part of the reason why. Um, so we'll message her and ask, and then we'll get on live, and we'll all fucking have popcorn with it. So, um, you know, that's 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 part of the reason. You know, I, I definitely wanted to get away from, from you know, a certain person, but at, at this point, it's uh, pretty good. Um, to get the fuck, uh, change everything up, I guess. And you guys wonder why I do this? This is why. In the first six words of this diatribe, I was doxxed again. It's okay, though. Like I said, two more weeks, it's gone. So, um, no, I'm gonna, everything's gonna be saying. Everybody get the barbecue Fritos. By the way, did you guys see the fire edit that some snark page did? I posted it. By the way, if you're if you go to Ryan Lee, Ryan.lee.tm, some snark page thought they really did something. I was like, me and my mods were like, post it. So um kudos. It was actually a fire post. Not even kidding. Not even kidding. Fire post. Can I can I can I hire you to do more edits of me? Um, it was actually pretty great. I posted it. I think I thought it was awesome. Fuck it. Uh, I thought it was awesome. Um, so you, you thought you did something, but you didn't. Well, actually, you did. You probably got some free traffic to your page, to be honest. So go enjoy the snark on their page, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, so let's let's get down to um, what exactly this post is about. And will my cup change? My cup. What cup? Um, so, nice. 
You guys can just continue to continue. Blah, blah, blah. You guys can continue to just talk down in the comments. I probably won't be reading them a whole lot. But um, you're taking all of us to Arby's with you. Nice. Who has Ryan's? Who has my face on a cup? What? <laughs> what? Somebody has my face on a cup. She has my face on a cup. Oh, that's dedication. That's dedication, honey. I am living all types of rent fucking free in her head. Trust me, I don't I don't lose sleep about her. Oh, yeah, I heard. I heard. I don't give a fuck. Let her talk. I don't give a fuck. Look, I got bigger. For, oh, I can't say that either. I got more I got more important fish to fry. I got more important fish to fry. I have made it on the cups, y'all. I've made it on the shitty cups. That's fine. That's perfect. Um anyway, uh let, let her do her little diatribe. It's it's perfectly fine. I don't give a fuck. Okay. She is a vile human being who has 785 call-out videos on YouTube where she is permanently banned from. So I'm really not worried about it. I'm really, I'm, I, I really don't give a fuck. Let her just talk. I don't give a fuck. Now, here we go. So we're going to read um, this entirely two ass long post. I showed it to you guys. Um, it, it, it's wild. It's, it's, it's really, really wild. It, it's, it's, you know, it's, hold on. It is this long that she sat and typed with her COVID fingers, you guys. It, it's that long. I'm scrolling very quickly. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, it, it it it's it's pretty ridiculous. Okay. So anyway, here we go. That is dedication. All right, here we go. I am not reading this whole fucking thing. I might just for shits and giggles. I don't really know. So you're gonna you're gonna want. Yeah, I can't focus that long either. Trust me, you can't because she switches in between first person and third person. Yeah. She wrote it between first person and third person. And you wonder why she can't get a book deal. All right, let's go. Sorry. All right. In this video, she posts the damn video again. She posts the damn, yeah, she was saying I and them. Apparently she's non-binary too at this point. I go by they, them. Why not? But uh, usually you don't refer to yourself as they, them. So I am more than a little confused. Um, anyway. So uh, I, I will read this um, probably in theatrical. I'll probably read this in theatrical. So have fun with that. Um, so here we go. And this, okay, the video is me, again, edited down to make it sound like I was making fun of a miscarriage when I was making fun of her theatrics for the 37th time. The theatrics of immediately hearing you're broken up with and spontaneously deciding you're having a miscarriage and then be theatrical about it. That is what I was laughing about. That is not scientific. That does not even happen. Why did she start beef? Because Christy came into my life, said that she doesn't talk to her. And now she's all mad at me. She's put. She has put down my piercings, my tattoos, my weight, my sexuality, my job. And apparently last night she was talking about what happens in my bedroom. The fuck. Anyway. So, guys, <laughs> they've been fed and they are wild. Okay, let's go. All right. In this video, Ryan Lee, parentheses, Geyer, parentheses. She wanted to throw that little jab out there. She could have just said it with her full chest, but she wanted to put parentheses in there. Look, I outed myself. Oh, no. I only own this name for two more weeks. Have fun with it. Anyway. Um, in this video, Ryan Lee Dyer, friend and supposed new TikTok rep for the Blanchard family, makes fun of Fancy's miscarriage from 30 years ago. Why is this relevant? Because again, it centers and comes back to Christy Blanchard. In these videos, Christy has been present in the chat and speaking on them because she can actually control what the fuck comes out of my mouth. Nobody can control what comes the fuck out of my mouth. Can I just say that? She has participated in the false narrative of this particular harassment of Fassie. Side note. She sat in my life. So everybody that sat in my life, by the way, just so you all know, everybody who sat in my life while this happened, we are all a part of it. Because if Christy's a part of it, 
We're all a part of it. See how that works? See how that works? So 500 people, 1,000 people have, what was it? Participated in the false narrative of this particular harassment. Okay, next paragraph. Nothing she states here is even remotely true of the situation. She is speaking in third person. Remotely true of the situation Fancy experienced during the loss of her first baby and is wildly inappropriate. Meanwhile, we have said nothing, done nothing, or even responded for weeks. You wrote a long-ass post a day before. You've went on at least two dozen lives, made multiple videos, multiple Facebook accounts. I know of at least three dozen things pointed in my direction, but she's done nothing, just so we know, just so we know. I'm still going. It's a really long, I have to drink. She can't go weeks without speaking. It hurts. Christy and Gypsy's claim that Fancy stalked and harassed them are false. After releasing our 2019 podcast, we have not spoken with or about the family at all. Hold on, that bears repeating. After releasing our 2019 podcast, we have not spoken with or about the family at all. That bears repeating. After releasing our 2019 podcast, we have not spoken with or about the family at all. Welcome to the Good News, Good Wives Network, everybody. And today we talk about the Blanchards. Does anybody remember that? Every single day? Every single day? Every, an entire platform built on it? Does anybody remember that? Hey, guys. I'm Fancy. And here you're with the Good Wives Network. And today we're talking about... Gypsy Rose. No, just me. Okay, cool. All right, next paragraph. Oh, sorry. This is part of a really long paragraph. My bad. Hold on. It was the last conversation Fancy had with Christy before learning who she had provided Natasha with all the lies about Fancy's marriage and personal body years later. Christy even complimented us on how great the podcast was and how it was good to keep the drama to a minimum in our episodes. It was also when she asked Fancy to not provide the FBI with the information the ex-mods and Natasha's had asked her to send in. Fancy and her team decided to reinduce stress and unnecessary drama of the stalking and cyberbullying ended when they could agree to a truce, especially in the media related to, to specifically to Christy, not the case. Fancy chose to not pursue legal action or to participate with the FBI in the investigation. Girl. Girl. Police wouldn't take you serious. And you're trying to tell me the FBI gives two flying fucks? Anyway. An investigation she was originally was supportive of and begged Fancy to pursue to stop her from harassing them. It was not until Fa- Christy turned after the release the fuck it was not until christy turned after the release of the interrogation video that she gave natasha false stories about fancy and provided her with some of gypsy's medical records that she asked fancy to drop the case i by the way i'm doing the judge judy voice by the way you know the little guy that's like and in this case they did um that's what i'm doing i don't know i won't tell you anyway Our team has been approached over the years by several content creators, news outlets, concerned citizens, and victim family members to assist in taking Natasha down. And we have politely declined. Please do. Anyway, we were in contact with the people of OPP. OPP, hey, you know me. We're down with OPP. Who the fuck is OPP? Anyway, sorry. When Natasha was trying to report and take advantage of their town on the Shanna Peoples case. She was literally run out of that town by the people living there. That's more shit on Natasha. Hmm. Anyway, that's all on YouTube. Maybe it's in one of those videos. This is a really, there's like no breaks in this. It's really hard to follow it. Okay. We were approached, we were also, wait, hold on. We were also approached by concerned family members when she started on the Kim Reamer case. The only things we were told these people were to be careful and that she would try to use them to run more fraudulent money scams. And she did. Damn that nasty Natasha. 
After the Reamer case, we had no other contact with Natasha or anyone concerning her. We were only recently made aware from the social media about her dealings with the Gannon Stouch case. You know, the one where she sold the dead baby autopsies and put them behind a paywall. Anyway, we have never stalked her or followed her case to case as she claims. In fact, we did everything to steer clear of her and her criminal dealings. Y'all, I ain't even, I ain't even, I ain't even a quarter of the way through. All right. Continuing. When Fancy was approached by A&E, her only condition was that the Blanchers did not participate because she wanted it to be accurate. Wait, what? She didn't want the family that it involved to be involved so it would be accurate? Did I just read that? Did I just read that she did not want the family that in, that was involved with it to not be involved with it so that it would be accurate? We're going to read that again. At the time, Fancy... Well, wait, whoops. When Fancy was approached by A&E, her only condition was that the Blanchers did not participate because she wanted it to be accurate. My brain hurts. Anyway... She did not speak on any of the drama, stalking, cyberbullying, or pain this family caused her, her family, her team, her friends, and her company. Company that doesn't exist, by the way. Go look for it. Anyway, scrolling down. At any time, Fancy could have released all the evidence of what transpired during and after cutting ties with the Blanchards. We chose to keep it for our book. Have fun with that, because Jesus Christ... And documentary that she doesn't have planned, by the way. She has no idea where she's going with it. She told me so. So that it doesn't permeate our lives again. Since mainstream media was only interested in the lies Gypsy and Christy have sold everyone, this was our only recourse. It was not until Fancy was contacted by the Banfield show that the drama started again. Fancy and Colleen made the choice not to announce their interview publicly because the past, anytime... Blanchard's got wind of Fancy or our team being contacted by the media. They began a smear campaign of Fancy. Fancy made the mistake of telling a TikTok creator, Miss Country Dentures Jessica Vaughn, that she did not know was around during the years of drama that she was going to be on the Banfield show. This is on the Good Wives Network Facebook page, just so you know. We're doing a dramatic read-along. We're only about a quarter of the way through. It's really long. This is one post. Anyway, within hours, Fancy's segment was pulled, and she was suspected since Katie Joy, another internet personality Katie used to, Christy used to previously dox and spread lies about Fancy. She's doxed like four people so far in this, just so you know. She's going to do more in a minute. Posted that she had been contacting media. She was who must have told the Blanchards, but we still couldn't figure out how she would have known scroll. Fancy had begun to evaluate who she told and approached Jessica, wondering if she was who told Christy. Not only at that time did she admit it was her, but then she tried to blackmail Fancy into not sharing her name by threatening to release Fancy's criminal background. I did that. Anyway, again, alleging that there was a felony. False. There is. Want me to post a bitch? Anyway, it's perjury. $5,000 bond. We don't have bonds, man. It was $5,000 for perjury. It was a felony because she lied about trying to get over $400 in federal aid that she didn't deserve. It's on her report. Totally true. Anyway, Fancy tried to reason. Wait, wait, what? Fancy tried to con continue to defuse the situation and reason with Jessica before deciding to block her. Jessica then went on a mess to message her on other platforms, threatening her. Jessica started to make videos talking about Fancy long before Fancy ever uttered her name publicly. We're still going. A few days later, oh, here, here, Brandy, you're coming in now, babe. A few days later on the YouTube channel, Uncorked with Brandy. Brandy Jolly, docs number what? Hold on, where are we at? Hold on, there was me, Country Dentures. Me, Country Okay, hold on, let's go. Me, Country Dentures. On court with Brandy, Brandy Jolly, Don Brown, Jen Duffy, Tori Johnson, and Christy Blanchard participated in a three-hour live de dedicated to exposing Fancy. In this live, Jean admitted to a long others to be creating numerous accounts to harass, stalk, and embarrass Fancy, her family, and her husband. We are at seven, by the way. There's more, by the way. There's more. 
keep track. She's docked seven people in this. Just, uh, Kendall, I got you. I will read you a whole thing. Just, just tape what we're doing. Why are they harassing my husband? Who's harassing my husband? Who's harassing my husband? Anyway, answering down in here. I'm, I'm busy. Okay. In this live. Oh, we're going to go back to that because this is really good. Okay. In this live, Jean admitted along with others to creating numerous accounts to harass, stalk, and embarrass Fancy, her family, and her husband. These pages include Free Craig alleging Fancy was a domestic abuser instead of a domestic abuse survivor. That's fucking rich. That's fucking rich. You're mad that somebody called you an abuser? Oh, should we go back to the post from yesterday when you literally said that my abuser, I ruined her life because I put her in jail for what she did? Oh, honey pie. That is adorable. So you don't want people doing it to you, but you're going to do it to other people. Right. Pop meat kettle. Hypocrisy. Got it. All right. Let's continue on with the theatrical reading of Fancy's Diatribe on Facebook today. Matter of fact, Fancy, what I would, sorry, April. April, what I would really appreciate, appreciate you doing is every day write a diatribe and I will have a theatrical reading of it later and we'll give you lots more views. And I do it a lot more fun than you do. We can read, yes, we can read yesterday's, maybe tomorrow. Anyway. So. Oh, this is good. Okay, hold on. We're going to start back because this is good. Okay. These pages include Free Craig alleging Fancy was a domestic abuser instead of a domestic abuse survivor. Pop meat kettle. Anyway. A page called Fancy's Hoo-Ha Cookie Club that made fun of an STD Fancy never had. And several pages making fun of the project she was working on with the Blanchards at the time. These women and many others, and was spelled with two Ds, and many others who participated are all part of the former mod squad for Natasha. The entire chat was dedicated to harassing and bashing Fancy. And this video with Christy in the chat, Brandy and Tori released the email Christy sent to the Banfield show. In it, she told the Banfield show that Christy lied to the press, harassed her family, and if they ever had Fancy on that way, they would never participate in interviews with News Nation ever again. Sorry, I'm getting text messages. Fancy identified herself to the Banfield show from Go. When asked about why she was no longer their spokesperson, Fancy was honest and stated she was probably not who the producer wanted to speak with. The producer pressed for why. Fancy let them know that the family had bullied, harassed, and stalked her over the many years when the producer indicated she was worried about her own child idolizing Fancy. Fan or Gypsy, sorry, I get, I get really confused. Fancy wrote this. This was her diatribe today. It's really long. We're not even halfway through. I'm not even kidding. All right. Hold on. We're mad. Fancy had no intention of bashing the family during the interview. The producer was aware of Fancy's involvement and stance and still proceeded to send her a camera crew for the interview. When asked to give one statement about Gypsy, she stated, quote, Gypsy is a very cunning, manipulative, dangerous young woman who's doing exactly what her mama has taught her to do. Unquote. When Fancy came to TikTok, she was angry, not unhinged. She quickly built a following to over 20,000 without assistance of anyone. Without, okay. According to Ryan, this is how she found Fancy. This is where I'm going to have to, you know, side note type deal because it's pretty fucked up. Anyway, let's go. All right. This is how Ryan found Fancy. When Ryan came on board, she inflamed Fancy's emotions. She even tried to limit who Fancy spoke to, warning her about everyone she had issues with. This was when Fancy began to try to turn over the reins of TikTok to Ryan. So she tried to, I got it. So she admitted that, cool. Okay, cool. Let's continue. When Fancy didn't listen, she berated her through texts and phone calls. The unhinged behavior started when accounts of hundreds of people were sent in to stalk and harass her on every platform. Hundreds of people. It was triggering her back to the first time that the Blanchards did this. Fancy turned to the people she thought were her advisors and her friends, Ryan, Courtney, and Jane. She warned them that the Blanchard family would use the exact tactics they did to, cre to create dissension and problems. 
She warned Ryan specifically about Brandy, who now claims she is friends with the Blanchards. At the same time, Brandy, Tori, and even Titania contacted Fancy's loyal partner, Colleen, trying to convince her to leave the company. There's no company for fuck's sake. They utilize classic scare tactics. Threatening her license could be at risk. Probably because she was reading medical records online that weren't hers. Think about that. Nah? Okay, cool. Colleen knows this is not true and stayed on course. Colleen is worried not about her or Fancy's actions, but about the actions of deranged people that seem to be attached to the Blanford. Blanchard family. They posted her LinkedIn profile alleging she was fired due to scams, when in fact Colleen had taken a position that moved her up in her career. Colleen has two small children and cannot lose her livelihood due to the antics of crazy people. Colleen remains a loyal friend and partner to Fancy, and in the company that she, Christina, and Sarah built, there's no fucking company. Go look up the license. It's fucking fake, like her name. Anyway. Brandy admitted to Colleen that she and Tori had already contacted Ryan. They contacted me after I talked afterwards. I can show you text messages. Let's continue. Days later, Ryan entered a live fancy was hosting that got shut down for harassment, that she was only speaking about her life, singing, and no content on the Blanchards or any drama. Okay, now here we go. We're going to set this shit straight right now because I got all the screenshots. And if you want to see them, they are on Facebook.com slash Moon Mama Ryan, M-O-O-N-M-A-M-A-R-Y-A-N. You can go check out these text messages because they will shoot her shit down. She posted 30 edited text messages. I posted them all in order for you to enjoy. Grab your Fritos and your Baja. All right. All right. All morning, Ryan had been off on her communications with Fancy. In the live, according to Ryan, she was under one of her numerous fake profiles. She stated this at first, that this was a profile that Fancy had asked about her health, and Fancy lost it and blocked the user. False. I do believe that user's probably in here. Movies and more were the ones that asked about her health. Not me. I was user 404 not found. Just so you know. That was me. Wrong person. She has them confused. Just so you know. I didn't ask about her health. What I said is, how can you have a company when you don't pay people? That's what I asked. And she blocked me. Anyway, so, then later she stated that the question she asked was about fancy paying creators. Oh, I didn't get that far. And fancy blocked the user. Also false. Wanna bet, bitch? I was there. But thank you for trying to gaslight me yet again. The only person blocked by fancy on that live was Gypsy's current good friend, Macklin. Also in all of Ryan's lives now. I have never seen this person in my life. FYI. I'm just now reading this. I am reading this along with you guys. I have not read 95% of this shit because oh my, it is a text wall. Like it is, the whole thing is written like this. Okay. It's a fucking text wall. Get good, get new content. Nah, I'm having fun reading my theatrical statements. All right. Macklin was introduced to Gypsy through her former friend, Rachel. Rachel was also a victim of Gypsy and Christy playing to keep... Gypsy popular on social media. Last night, Rachel was a topic of these vicious women's live. I have never talked about Rachel, so I don't know who she's talking about. Anyway, in this, they have even bashed Rachel's brother who was murdered. I don't even know who Rachel is. I've heard of her vaguely. Okay, here we go. Let, oh, we got, we got to go through this because this is not what happened. All right. I have told this story already, by the way. I've already told this story. Ryan demanded Fancy show her the blocked list. She told Fancy she would go in and look at it herself since she had access to the account. She even admitted to Fancy through that text that the name was not on the blocked list. What I said, by the way, y'all, is she liked to tell me that people talk shit about me. And I said, I have your account info. I'll go look for myself. I already knew I was blocked on two different accounts because I was there. What I said was, I'm going to go look in your accounts to see who's talking shit about me. And guess what? There wasn't any. And then she said she deleted them or they happened on YouTube. She couldn't remember which. Convenient, right? But we're going to we're going to change it around and make it about the blocked list. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. Okay. Fancy left the live show. She was still running on Facebook and YouTube because Ryan was demanding to speak to her. Go look at the text messages. 
She is saying, get, I'll get off live if you talk to me. I'll get off live if you talk to me. Just talk to me. Just talk to me. I'll get off live. Go look at the text messages. They're there. All right. What transpired next was Ryan demanding over, over and over for hours that Fancy answer her. And when she would, Ryan would berate her for answering because it wasn't the answer she was looking for. That bitch contacted me on my phone, on Facebook Messenger, for eight fucking hours. Go look at the texts. Go look at the texts. Again, facebook.com slash moonmamaryan. M-O-O-N-M-A-M-A-R-Y-A-N. They are all there for you to enjoy. All right. Fancy, thinking perhaps texting was the issue, asked her to call. She refused, but kept demanding Fancy answer her through a text on variety of things. A variety of things she kept sending me. And hell no, I'm going to fucking answer a phone. That girl talks over me and I can't talk. No, thank you. I'm good. And I wanted screenshots because something like this was going to happen. Oh, hey. Uh, take a Baja break. We're not even half done. This is one post, y'all. This is one post. This is one post. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're talking about her fingers now. Good job. All right. All right, so she refused, but kept demanding that Nancy fancy her through a text and a variety of things. Fancy explained her fingers hurt due to health complications and could not text. She also felt her tone and words were being misunderstood. Ryan then made fun of those disabilities. Your finger hurting is not a disability. It's not. Fingers hurting is not, by the way, did your fingers hurt when you typed this out? I got to know. Did your fingers hurt when you typed out something that has taken me so far, almost a half an hour to read, and I am still halfway done? I am still halfway done. Do you see my point? Do you see my point? Your fingers are bullshit. Get that for Reddit. Reddit, her fingers are bullshit. Anyway, Ryan told Fancy to go back on live around three and they would speak later. And that's exactly what Fancy did. I told you. I said go live. Go enjoy yourself. Be happy. I believe that's what I said exactly. Go look. Anyway, she was on live when the text from Ryan at work came in. I thought, she, I, thought I wasn't at work. That was her thing. I wasn't at work. But now I'm at work? Cool. Only because I showed that I was at work. Got it. All right. She did not respond. She had responded fucking immediately. Look at the timestamps. Anyway. After leaving the live at approximately 6 p.m., she read the messages and responded, not understanding them at them at all. Well, less than four responses back trying to show Ryan she had not texted. Go look at the text messages. The last message was at 613 that I said, if you contact me again, I'm blocking you on every platform. That's why she quit texting. Because at 613, I told her, if you text me again, I'm blocking you permanently. Hold on. Uh, hold on. There might be something about the relations. Let's continue. At 612, Ryan sent a voice clip yelling at her and text her telling her she would not talk to her tomorrow. No, I did that earlier. 613. Go look at the text messages. The one where I screamed, stop texting me, stop calling me, whatever. All right. Fancy did not respond. She went to dinner with her husband to celebrate Valentine's Day because they hadn't on the day. Convenient, but anyway. The next day, she was informed the incident was all over the internet. Me, who went on very nicely, crying that I had lost my friend, that I wanted to get away from her, and to not barrage her with mean comments or go into her live or say anything mean or hateful or hurtful towards her, that we had decided to part ways, and it was all over the internet. Got it. All right. Jane, Courtney, and Ryan all left the chat that Courtney started when the team had with no explanation. Fancy told her to do it. She told her to make it, just so you know. Courtney has now joined Ryan in her attacks, claiming that Fancy used the fact that Courtney was a blank of survivor to somehow garner sympathy and manipulate her. She claims that this because after several days, she says, of talking to Fancy off a suicidal ledge, Fancy stated to her, I'm too much of a coward to do it, Court. This is a correct statement. Fancy has struggled with blank thoughts her entire life, and after three failed attempts, this is her mental battle. It makes her feel 
that even in the choice not to live, she has failed. Struggling with blank is a very personal journey that many of us struggle, and for court to make these claims about fancy is absolutely abhorrent. Make what claims? We read from the text message she sent. What text messages? Or where, where did she... What? What claims? We we literally read from a text message that, 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 that April wrote. It's in her Patreon! April's dumbass uploaded it to her Patreon. It's in her Patreon. By the way, it's in the Patreon that y'all been paying for is the post where Fancy's talking about it and manipulating Courtney. Yeah, she uploaded it, not paying attention. It's in there. Go read it. We guess she found the backbone Fancy said she didn't have. That statement was the statement of concern to Courtney, who was telling Fancy the bullying was taking a toll on her. She was trying to protect Courtney and told her to just let Ryan and herself take all that on so she could be safe. That's kind of true. We actually did do that, by the way. Fancy responded poorly and against Colleen's counsel by reacting on a live, reading the text messages between her and Ryan the night of the falling out. She read like a quarter of them. I got all of them up. But Fancy still had hoped that they could work things out. But sadly, that ship had sailed. Was it the resignation from your fake company that I sent an email to? Was it the was it the leave me alone, I'm good text on Facebook? Was it the leave me alone, I'm good text on TikTok? What part of that did you not grasp? That shit, that ship sailed, burnt, sunk, and was eaten by a narwhal. Just wondering. All right. I'm not done. This is long. Days later, the reason became clear. When Christie kept showing up with Dawn Brown, Brandy, and Tori in her lives. Now she has been on a near-month-long tirade, daily bashing Fancy, discussing and lying about her hysterectomy that she didn't have. I stand by that shit. I'm gonna fuck. Christina's passing. No, we corrected you when you tried to say something and Brandy knew the facts. That, that that's we, we didn't make fun of that. We corrected you. 30-year-old miscarriage that she had on the spot. Her child. Her family, her friends, stating Colleen has left the company. Colleen herself came into my live and said she was distanced, by the way. By the way, she came in and said she was distancing herself. Let's get that right. Hundreds of people saw it. And fancy because she stated she was distancing for herself from the drama. Not fancy. Not the company. The dr There's no company. Gypsy, Christy, Courtney, Brandy, Tori. There's a lot of E's here. Has all participated in these lives. When did Gypsy participate in one of my lives? She popped in once and didn't say anything. The fuck? Now Ryan has become the official rep for them on TikTok. Am I being paid for all this shit? I'm a plant. I'm a rep. I theatrically read. I want my paycheck. Anyway, I'm not done yet. Fancy has lost her platform because she stood up to them. Nothing more. No, you're right. Nothing more. Fancy did not respond until her miscarriage from 30 years ago was talked about by another TikToker first, Bree, who is a huge gypsy stan and personal friend to Christy. A woman who is currently wearing and stating she's going to sell jewelry she created of Fancy's image superimposed on a fat body to shame her. The Blanchards, Ryan, Courtney, Brandy, Tori, have all made comments supporting this. When? Fucking when? Fucking when? When did I ever fuck that? Anyway. Hold on. 
There's never been any contact between Bree and Fancy. Fancy only learned of her through the weird bashing and false videos Bree was making about Fancy. The only time Fancy has responded to this person was about the weird jewelry. Fancy labeled Bree as a trans woman because she believed, and other creators and viewers all believe, and is true based on her former content that has now disappeared. Never mind the fact that Brie put out a whole ass video stating she was not. But you guys all think she is, just so you know. Fancy did not bash her based on her gender identity. She did not comment on her other than to label her with the term Fancy believed was proper way to respectfully address her. And has stated if she is wrong in identifying Brie as trans, she is sorry. Not only to her, but to the trans community as well. Would you like me to play the video? I believe you called her a whole ass man verbatim. It's in my YouTube. It's in my YouTube. She calls her a whole ass man. That's respectful, right? All right. Brandy, Courtney, Christy, Tori, and Ryan have used this to make public statements about Fancy's child who identifies as non-binary. Which, by the way, she never talked about until we, you know, we're talking about trans people. Her child has also been labeled all over Reddit as an ableist. The f Do you know what the word ableist means? Anyway, as an ableist for speaking out on how she perceived the conversations between Ryan and Fancy as a BPD splitting based on her own experiences dating a person with BPD. Okay, we're going to talk about that shit. So me, a person with borderline set boundaries when a person was blowing up my phone for eight hours and her 20 year old daughter dated a guy for a few minutes and became a psychiatric professional that diagnosed my boundary setting as splitting just to get you up to par okay then Ryan took that information and started weeks of making content and lying about the miscarriage and alleging fancy never had it or faked a pregnancy Bree broke that first. Bree so, Bree talked about it. Bree they they came to Bree. Bree talked about it, and then I talked about it. Get your fucking story straight. Any attempts to have this content removed from or exposed on TikTok is how Fancy lost her profiles once again. So how'd you learn? How'd you lose them the first few times? Could it be the fact that you were harassing the Blanchards over and over and over and calling them out in every fucking video? Could it be that? No, no, not that at all. Okay, cool. They even reported the video she was releasing showing her recovery from her, 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 for, la, 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 from her hysterectomy on January 17, 2004. It was taken down for bullying. Who? Herself? You know, mine was taken down too, showing you didn't have one. Funny how that works. I'm not done, y'all. This is one post. Fancy has never claimed that in all she did not have moments that she did or said things she should not have. However, she has never incited the drama or encouraged it. She's the one who went on reading the fucking text messages to begin with. She is the one who doxed me to begin with. She is the one that contacted my daughter that I put in jail to begin with. She is the one that said that not only did I ruin my daughter's life, by putting her in jail, but that I did it to her. But she's never done anything. Got it. Okay, cool. Hold on. She has asked every team member to not... There is no team. What, you got Sarah Pink Hat barking at your feet? Calm down. To not engage, not participate, and to not... And to let it go and not take legal... Act. It's not legal action if it's true, baby cake. It's not legal action if it's true. Not hashing it out on the internet. She has stated that all the parties involved to, and including Natasha, have all been manipulated to react in manners and ways they would never have, if not for the manipulation of Gypsy and Christy. Not done yet. Currently, we have made the decision for our own sanity, and that, you're talking about yourself in the third person. I think you need to question that shit quick. 
and that of our viewers to refrain from responding or even discussing this case at this time. Yet yesterday you went on an entire diatribe with a post this long just the day before, by the way. just I, We need to read that one maybe tomorrow. Um, we are looking forward to moving past all of this. We are still working on the book. Good luck. And documentary, and we will continue to update on current news of the case and individuals involved. We ask that currently you respect our decision to limit the discussion. Anyone who brings these people up on our page or on our lives will be issued a warning. And if not, it continues to be banned. The common denominator in this drama, bullying and harassment, continues to be Christy. Gypsy from the sidelines, but Christy at the forefront. She is who kept this case relevant in the media and on social media at all costs. She is who brokered the deals, set up the media interviews, and fanned the flames. All claims by the Blanchards and the people they surround themselves with are false. Fancy has proven this time and time again. What have you proven? I want one, one, one stalking, bullying, or harassment text from Christy in the last four years. One. I want uh, four years. I want one text showing that she has stalked, stalked you, harassed you, cyberbullied you. One text. Just one. It's all you need. Doctor the bitch. I don't care. Let's see one to show that you can have your... Because in those text messages... I sure as fuck wasn't stalking you. As a matter of fact, every other text message was, leave me the fuck alone. Leave me the fuck alone. Leave me the fuck alone. Did you read that or did you just like, you know, whatever. So, all right. Guys! There's, I have, there's a dog outside. All right, continue on. Yet anytime she posts proof, they get it taken down. Christy has repeatedly sent people and to either garner information, steal the company documents, or to manipulate our team and our company. You can't steal documents from a fake company. Don Brown, Don Broker, eight. Brandy, and just to name a few. So that's eight people she's docked so far. Not to mention she mentioned Jane, nine. Um, continue on. All Team Gypsy and all supported of Christy despite having had issues with her specifically and been quite vocal about it to our team and publicly. Now they've even infiltrated our Patreon. Something Brie claimed she was going to do and had the posts and they're removed as well. Fancy is currently working with Patreon to fix this situation so that she can continue to charge you asinine amounts for things that can be found for free on Google. And her own post where she did that with Courtney, by the way. You might want to go look at that. We appreciate your continued support and loyal viewership during a very difficult time for Fancy Colleen, their families, their friends, their supporters, and their team. Next week, we intend to get back to other stories we have neglected due to this drama case. We hope to see you there. That was one post. One post. Just one. I want to know who infiltrated her. I really do. She posted it on Facebook. It's on Facebook. It's on Good Wives. You can go read it. It's there. She's got another one just as long from yesterday. Where she... um, well, God, what was that one? Oh, that's the one where she um, told my last name. Said that I ruined my daughter's life. Um, and that I basically abused her instead, even though the state of Kentucky put her behind bars. But hey, what the hell do I know? She um, again doubled down on the fact that she never called Brie a man, which is why there's a video on my YouTube of her saying it. Yeah, that's another one. Hold on, because I'm going to get to the best one right now. Hey, knock it off. I know there's a dog barking outside. I understand. I understand. Quit it. They're going to bark before I even sit down. There's a dog outside losing its shit. Anyways. Oh. So anyway, told you. So, and then in the post from yesterday, she outed a closeted person in the LGBTQ community. She went after Tori, and when Tori didn't talk, 
she went after Tori's child who was closeted and outed her. And now they're worried about her mental health. Are you there? Mm -mm. So, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Perfect. I'm in my car because, so, not only did she out my child, who is actually uh, he, the, the pronouns are now he, him, and they, um, not only did she out my child on a public platform with thousands of followers, but she outed my child on two different platforms, on Facebook and on YouTube. <clears throat> my child is still not out to all of their siblings. My child is out to me, my husband, and a few friends. My child is not out to their co-workers. My child is not out to all of their siblings. My child is not out to grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles nieces nephews who are adults and on tiktok and on youtube and on facebook and follow all of our accounts not only that but she also in that post yesterday pointed out that my child has mental health issues and has several diagnoses my child has suffered with feelings i, I don't know if i can say the word they wanted to unalive themselves is that the word i have to use yeah okay they have wanted to unalive themselves for the past um, eight years. Eight years my child has struggled with this. And I have had my child in counseling. So, no, I have not ignored the problem, April. If you're in here watching or if you watch later or if this gets sent to you, I have not ignored the problem. My child has been in counseling. So not only was my child outed when they weren't ready to be outed, all of their mental health issues were outed as well. And then to top it off, my 15-year-old came downstairs today. And most of my kids are not on social media because they could just care less. Like, they're more interested in being with their friends and going out and doing things. So they're not really on social media. So I was like, okay, maybe none of the kids will see this. You know, that'll give me time. Because my, my child was at work last night when this went out. So I was, and they usually come home and they go to bed and they don't get up till like noon. So I was like, okay, I have time to process this and how we're going to handle this because the last thing they needed was to hear this from somebody else. So my 15 year old came downstairs like in tears this morning and was like, mom, fancy outed my sibling. And I was like, yep. And they're like, do you know how bad this is do you have any idea how bad this is mom and i was like well i know why i think it's bad but why do you think it's bad like i'm trying to understand my 15 year old's point of view on why they're crying over this and they were like mom they have been trying to unalive themselves for years and they just got outed when they weren't ready and now my 15 year old is scared to death that my oldest is going to unalive themselves when they find out what's been done but she's never done like, anything are you wrong. Fucking, can I cuss on here? Yes. Because I just did. Yes. Are you fucking kidding me? For somebody who says that they are supportive of the community of the LGBTQ community, for somebody who says they are supportive of that, they go and out somebody on a public platform in front of thousands of people. Tell me where in that situation that is supportive. You don't like me. That's fine. You come at me. Come at me all you want. I'm a grown-ass woman. I am a whole grown-ass woman. I can handle myself. Don't you fucking draw my, drag my kids into this. Like, at all. Do not fucking drag my kids into this. For somebody who claims to support and be a, a um, oh my gosh, what is the word? A, not a supporter, a advocate that's the word for somebody who claims to be an advocate for mental illnesses you're gonna go and out my ki kid when you know they have that they struggle already tori where in this situation is april at all supportive of mental health issues or of somebody in the lgbtq community lbt oh my gosh i can't even talk 
in the LGBTQ community. Tell me where, please, so that I can understand how this was supportive in any way. All right, Tori, actually, let's talk about this. I don't know. Are you aware of this particular thing I'm about to read? Because I'm about to tell you guys exactly what the fuck happened. Oh, I read the whole, I, I had the post sent to me. I read it. Okay, for me, where I discussed Tori's specific child's conditions with her approval and knowledge, because I didn't think it was right to share her personal information, especially about her child. <laughs> oh, are you fucking kidding me? But, oh, no, hold on. Hold on. No, let's, let's, let, let's let her words sink her. I'm going to read what we are talking about right now. By the way, both my child and hers are adults now. Does that matter? Okay, let's talk about the fact. Quit! My God! Anyway, let's talk about the fact that Tori won't even acknowledge that her child has come out to her on multiple occasions. Has told my child this, this too, and I tried to support her child in their journey when Tori did not. Tori's child even begged me to let them come live with me because of all of the support I showed them. Let's also talk about the fact that Tori won't even acknowledge that her child has come. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's also talk about the numerous times we talked about my child's journey when I was struggling to help my child and how she told me how ridiculous it was and how it's just a phase like that one kid was going through. My child doesn't care what I call them, son, daughter, him, her, because they realize who they are and they care more about my love than a label. So apparently we're not allowed to have labels. But anyway. Tori also refused to help her child understand their mental health diagnosis because she didn't want them to use it as an excuse. If Tori had acknowledged it, gotten them appropriate help, and explained it to them properly, they might actually be able to get real help and understand how to be productive in society. Tori allows her other children, especially her clear favorite, to bully and harass all her other children and Tori and her husband in participating and mocking them. She's also told me that I, 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 I do you have a daughter named Hunter? That, um, that is my oldest that we're discussing. They now go by a different name. Okay. Well, according to her, she is, they are, he is. Sorry. It's an adjustment. You're, you're just learning. Well, she had told me it was, I had said he, she said she. And so now I'm, I'm like a little oh, flabbergasted. She's been supportive. Right. She and said she, she was very adamant. It was, it was a girl. Very, very adamant that it was a girl's name. However. Um, they are also, her daughter did not feel appropriate around your daughter. That's what, this is what she was telling me. That's, that's why I'm using the word daughter. Her daughter had, um, she had to come home from something because your daughter, um, uh, made her daughter feel uncomfortable. Like she was going to be essayed. Wow. So, so. So her child was so uncomfortable with my child that they were repeatedly invited over to hang out and stay the night for the whole weekend. Yeah. So let's just go on to this. So this is where me and you tie in, by the way. Just like Ryan did to Ember, Tori would do the same things to her child that I watched in Ryan's 27 horrid videos. Another child that suffered from severe abuse and mental issues. Ember was mercilessly, mercilessly attacked in those videos by Ryan and Andrew, the quote unquote parents. Go watch my playlist. Make your own assumptions. By the way, me screaming was because she destroyed my house. Anyway, instead of getting them actual real help. And now that she's got a permanent, now she's got a permanent cr a criminal record and you put the child. You put the child she gave birth to underage in your care into the same system you tried to save them from. I can't steal somebody's child and put them into the system, but okay. Because in Ryan's words, I didn't know him. What the fuck does that even mean? You are no mother, Stacy slash Ryan. There's another dox, but anyway. Never thought I'd see eye to eye on anything with Natasha, but here we are, trash people. You know why we aren't friends anymore, Tori. Not that we ever were. My family told me that over and over. It's mostly because that taped phone call with Brandy. Oh, you're going to want to hear that. <laughs> Played for you was when I said you're a shit parent who raised six shit human beings. Oh, she told okay, me that all the so time. Let's back up a minute. There was a part where she said that she outed my child's mental health issues to Gypsy with my approval. Nope. Never told me she was doing it. Didn't tell me that she was going to share that information. In fact, Brandy told me that she called her all 
all kinds of upset and was like, Brandy, I need you to sit down. I, I'm so worried about something. And Brandy was like, okay, what's going on? And April was like, and this was when the whole blow up was happening between April and Gypsy, where Gypsy was, you know, calling her names and they were like going their separate ways. She was like, I told Gypsy in a way to kind of connect to her. I told her about Tori's child's mental health issues because I was wanting to connect with her and show that I understood her. Like those were April's words that she understood Gypsy because of my child's health issues. And she was like, I'm so worried that Gypsy is going to reach out to Tori and tell her that I told her these things. She was scared to death that she was going to lose my friendship when I found out that she told those things to Gypsy. So no, that was not with my permission at all. It was so bad that my kids wouldn't go anywhere with Tories, and my child had to tell me that one won't get actual help, and they made them uncomfortable and felt like they were being shroomed. Told you. Wow. Told you. It's right in there. Wow. I didn't even know that. It's wow. right in there. Like, so tell me if my kid was so bad, why were they continually invited over every weekend? Every weekend. Yep, she said that right in there. Let's see. Um, talking wow. about um, you were mad because you, she didn't you didn't return books or something. Um, oh. oh, yeah. Okay. So no, there was little as pet shop toys. Yeah. That my my fifteen year old was a kid still. So this has been probably maybe six years. I've known her like seven years. So I guess it was like six years ago. Her child, her youngest child, is now a legal adult. Um, so I'm going to, I don't know that child's age, but obviously it's over 18. It's somewhere between two of my kids. So it's somewhere between 19 and 21. Um, so her child had outgrown the littlest pet shops and we were at her house filming the TV series coping. The only show that actually ever got filmed, uh, we were filming episode one. And she was like, oh, my child wants to give your child their littlest pet shops. They've outgrown them. So, you know, here you are. She gave me the littlest pet shops. And I don't even remember how many she gave me. Maybe it was a box full. Maybe it was a tub full. Maybe it was a handful. I honestly don't remember because six years ago. And I don't play with littlest pet shops. So, no clue. So then three, was it three years ago? No. I guess two years ago, um, I started my own company like three years ago, almost three years ago. Um, and one of the products that I make and sell is bath bombs that have CBD oil in them. So around the end of the year, she wanted me to make her about a hundred bath bombs and give them to her and that she would pay me for them after they were sold, after they were sold. And she wanted me to make them at my cost. And whatever she sold them for, we would split that profit 50-50. First of all, at the end of the year, I'm not making anybody 100 anything and giving it to them without my money in my pocket. Then we get to the first of the year. And anybody that has their own business knows that first of the year means end of year inventory for that whole first week while you're trying to get that inventory down. So this was my first year doing inventory two years ago, like that January. And when I say I make bath bombs, let me just tell you, I have over 250 different bottles of aromas alone, okay, for, my, for all of my products. So I'm having to weigh and count and do all of that. Well, she's like, I need those bath bombs, Tori. It's after the first of the year. And I was like, no, I'm in the middle of end of year inventory. I have to count everything before I can make anything. I can't even make orders that are coming in because I have to finish this inventory. So then by probably the seventh or eighth, I'd have to like scroll through messages. She's like that, you know, she comes to me. She's like, I don't think we're on the same page. And this is the one time that she may have fired me. I'm, I may have quit. She may have fired me. I don't really care. But she was like, we're not working together. You obviously care more, more about your business than you do about this company. Um, Yeah, my business was paying our fucking bills. I was making enough to pay our mortgage. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In my first year. 
You yeah, wanted all last of the year. You, I was making enough to pay our mortgage. You wanted all the money from Good Wives Network and was pissed that April wouldn't split it with you. Okay, no. So that. So let, let me finish that story, then I'll address that one. So <laughs> I was like, you know what? You're right. We don't work well together. We need to go our separate ways. So that was that was when I left the first time, and. <clears throat> Okay, I just squirreled. I don't even remember why I was telling you that. <laughs> it's okay. I squirreled. It's um, okay. But that's, so that's the one time maybe that she may have fired me. And that's when I stopped being part of the company initially. Of course, I was more interested in my bath bombs. Um, and it's more than bath bombs, but I'm not trying to sell my stuff here. So, of course, I was more interested in that. It was paying my bills. It still is. <clears throat> so excuse me i was like sick back in december and now when i talk a lot i get like i sound crappy i'm sorry <clears throat> so um so then okay me wanting to take all of the money no what she doesn't understand because she oh uh, somebody says littlest pet shops yes thank you i scroll back um so when that all happened she messaged me like a week later and she's like oh by the way my child wants their littlest pet shop stuff back. Now we're talking four years later. Um, you gave them to my child four years ago. How the hell am I supposed to know what's hers and what was, you know, what belonged to your child and what belonged to my child? It's been four damn years. And it was like, well, we'll just come and she can, she remembers what was hers. She'll just pick them out. Honey, you've had my address this whole damn time. The only reason you wanted them was because you had nothing else you could take from me. And she mentions Anyways. it in a Facebook post yesterday, y'all. Yeah. So then she mentions it yesterday. Like, where's my, where's my littlest pet shop? Bitch, it's been six years. You abandoned them in four years. Take me to court. That judge is going to be like, no, you didn't care for four years. Oh, she says she'll be seeing all of us in you. court. Yes, and we have all of this showing what she's done. You want your stuff, you can just see me in court. Actually, I will give you the littlest pet shop when you pay me back for all the money that I spent on the trip to New York. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Then, and, and I'll pay, I'll give you your littlest pet shop when you pay me for all the Amazon orders that I sent to your house so that you could try to do a little business. That's a couple hundred dollars. So don't forget. And we'll just stop there. I won't Hold keep on. adding, but we'll just stop Hold on. there. Okay, so Tori, just so you know. So, you know, me and Tori have been friends for a really long time. And we had to go somewhere. We had to go on this trip. And she knew I didn't have any money. And she offered to take me on the trip, knowing I could not pay her back. And I didn't know when I could pay her back. And she said that she would, you know, she would do it. We were friends, whatever. And she spent $1,000 on that trip. And I told her I could never pay her back. But then, all of a sudden, she came at me that she needed $1,000. And who tries to, who, who gets rid of a friendship over $1,000? Our friendship was worth way more than $1,000. And I can't believe that we're not speaking because she, because I owe her $1,000. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's so more, so much more than that thousand. Like that was my tipping point when I was like, so when the trip to New York happened, that was for her to go to Christina's memorial. And she will tell you, if you listen to any of her lives now, she calls Christina her bestie. And I, it may be, I don't know. I wasn't involved in their friendship. Christina and I were not close. Okay. We were business partners. If you could see me, you could see the quotes I'm doing. Um, we were business partners and that was it. We didn't really talk. So I had no reason to go to New York, but I knew that she was so close to her and I knew how devastated she was. Remember guys, I've never been a friend, right? Right, never been a friend. But I knew how devastated she was. I had a car that I'm paying my monthly payments on, so it won't get repossessed. I had a car, I had a couple credit cards that I said, you know what, <clears throat> if you can pay me Half of this trip, half of this trip in monthly payments, I will put it on my credit card so you can go. Because, you know, that's what friends do. But I ain't a friend. I've never been a friend. I ain't loyal like that. Never, never have been, right? <clears throat> 
So we go. And when I'm asking for monthly payments, I'm like 20 bucks a month. Okay. 20 bucks. Maybe don't spend so much on your unnecessaries. Not even going to say what all of those are. So, oh, no, no, no. She did not pass from COVID. I see that there, court. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> I'll be fine, Riska. I just have to go inside and drink something. But my family does not need to hear me yelling and screaming and being angry. So I'm sitting in my car. I appreciate that, though. <clears throat> so. What did she die of? So she was sick. Now, I don't know if it was COVID or if it was the flu or if it was pneumonia or whatever. I'm going to venture to say that it was not COVID because she was given an antibiotic. And they have never given antibiotics for COVID. They've given it for pneumonia, bronchitis, things like that that can go along with COVID. Okay. But she was given an antibiotic that was apparently in the family of a medication that she's allergic to. And her family that I spoke with when I was at the memorial said that they think <clears throat> that what happened was she had a reaction in the middle of the night. And when she got up, she fell and she hit her head. Now, that is the same story know, Brandy told me. They do not know if it was hitting her head that caused her to pass or if it was a reaction and she just happened to hit her head. But that is what Christina's own family told me face to face not if it was COVID so let's go back because I will squirrel all night long I'm, I'm terrible I'm just I'm terrible at it so let's go back to me wanting all of the money what she doesn't understand because she doesn't actually own a real business is that when you divvy up your percentages of for your company you turn that into your accountant and that is your tax liability if you own 51 percent, that means you also have 51 percent of the tax liability that means that if there's money due you owe 51 percent legally if there is money on a return which is not very often on a business but if there is you get 51 percent of that return that is what the ownership means and then your accountant actually asks you for all of the receipts for each owning partner for what they have spent for the company. And then that gets turned into an equity ownership that also goes on the tax paperwork. Ask me how I know. I've got legitimate business partners. Legitimate, like actually have the paperwork. Um, so then there's the tax, then there's the equity ownership. And the equity ownership is actually based on how much time, money, and energy you have spent that can be proven so when i told her she needed to get give more than that 51 percent and split us all up equally i was actually trying to take some of that tax um liability off of her because i told her i said we can also and she was worried to death that if she didn't have 51 percent, that we would all get together and vote her out and i said we can mm -hmm. have it we can write it into the contracts. We can write it into the articles. We can write it into the business plan. We can go get it notarized that at no point are you able to be voted out unless it can, you can prove absolute negligence towards the company. Like that's all you would have to do. Having that ownership, like right now, the, the network that I own with two other people, one of them being Brandy, that network. I do have a controlling ownership, but that is because I also pay mo more of the money than anybody else. It's actually written into our contracts between the three of us. Brandy just put that, which is, is which is what is our, in our contract. She just wrote that. Yes. It's actually in the contracts that when the money starts balancing out and we're all equally paying, then my percentage goes down and their percentage goes up. That's how you actually do that. But because I'm the one paying the most in, I also have the most tax liability. That's how that goes. I also happen to have the most equity right now. That's besides the point. We're getting there. But so that's what that whole I wanted her company and her money. What money? What money? You were asking people for hundreds of dollars every month to pay your bills for a network 
and a company and a whatever that was failing after three or four years. And you stole her company, too. <laughs> okay. Okay. First of all, first of all, I did not steal it, and I can prove when I got mine and what, and that hers was still actively running on the platform that she was paying for. Like, I can prove with bank statements when the money was transferred, receipts, emails from the company, whatever you need, I can prove the dates that I acquired the company. I'm going to call it my company, Brandy. I, please don't take offense. I can... I can prove the date that I acquired my company. This is a different company. Prove. This is not the Good Wives Network. This is this is something that had happened before the Good Wives Network. What company? No, the one that you I have. have two the one that you have. You had yeah, you, you guys had one, but the one that April has now isn't is not a legit company. The Good Wives Network. No. But she had she did legitimately like when she says she has a network she needs to change that to had with a D at the end, past tense. Because she actually did have a network. She was she purchased on a platform, and she had some shows, a couple of shows, I'm going to say five or six or something, that were, um, that were streaming on Roku, I think Amazon, and I think Apple. I don't know. I have a Roku TV, so I don't know about the other ones. But she actually did have a network for a few months. A network, and though, so not a business. No, no, a network, right. But that's what she's saying I stole, is that I stole her network. Well, I can show the receipts. I can show the proof that I did it the right way. I went and filed and got an actual T-E-I-N. No, yes. I say T-I, tax, employee, I did. Yes, T-E-I-N. I went and filed for that. And it was the next day that I went and purchased the, the network. But I can prove that that network was running simultaneously with her network, which means it is not the company that she claims is stolen. Because if I'd stolen it, it would be the exact same one, and it could not have been running consecutively. Or is it concurrently? No, she's not the one who stole the logo Brandy is. No, no, no. Okay, so the logo, and even if, okay, now Brandy did not steal it, first of all. Okay? April never paid for it. April never paid for it. So you can't... April never paid for it. April told the artist she didn't even like it. The artist gave Brandy permission to use it. So even if by some far stretch, Brandy had stolen, quote unquote, the logo, that fight is with the artist who gave Brandy the rights to use and it. And that artist has went on record stating she was never paid. Exactly. That artist has gone on record saying she was never paid. That artist has gone on record stating, and actually, so trademarking and all of that, like ownership, if you know anything about artwork and that kind of thing, ownership of that actually starts with, like, in the intellectual property part of it, starts with when the, the um, logo is being created, when the artwork is being created. That ownership actually belongs to the person doing the artwork, unless... You sign, like if I have somebody commission something for me, they have every right to commission that same thing for somebody else. Unless I have a written contract that I retain the sole rights to that work. So any fight she has about the logo wouldn't be with Brandy anyway. Legally, it would be with the artist. So she needs to go on with herself about that one. Yep. Just saying. Yep. Although I will say one of my followers did happen to snag up a nice little uh, dot com that she can never have. Uh-huh. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's the same one. I think it's the same one, but I heard about that. Yeah, they were like, and they, she was like, yeah, that was like the best $11 I ever spent. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm going to do with it yet, but it's mine. And I was like, okay, all right, good, good for you. Um, right. yeah, so apparently, just so everybody knows, apparently, I don't know if this is true or not, but somebody just came in here and said, there's another Facebook, there's another Facebook post, I don't know. Oh my gosh, I, of course there is, of course there is. Oh, there's another Facebook I don't know, maybe it's a book again, I don't know, her COVID fingers must be killing her by this point. I don't know, 
I mean, you'd think so. As you much think. of a problem as they are. <laughs> Missy's like, I'm on it. I'm going to go look. Um, no, you know, it's, um, she also had said on here, hold on, let me get this back up again. I had to laugh because she knows enough. She says that I will still be seeing all of you in court. Would you really want to go there with all the stuff that we have between <laughs> what all you've done at this point? See, here's the thing. I think she, honest, like, legitimately, I think she is, like, I don't want to say delusional because no, she's delusional. she can control it. Like, well. And see, here's my thing. Here's why I don't think it's actually a delusion. I was talking with someone else about this the other night. Um, delusional, she she attacks. Like when something is said against her, something she's angry about, that's when she goes full force attack. If she was delusional, it wouldn't be so controlled. That's true. I have to laugh at this. Right? She says, isn't the motto in LGB, L, LGBTQ community love is love? Well, you knew that much. Ooh, somebody wants to send me a message on Messenger. That's interesting. Um, I have shown my children unconditional love. What have any of you shown to your children? Nothing but ignorance and hate. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Let's see if there's anything else on here. Um, oh, and then uh, she posts a comment that you and I posted, apparently. Tori says, the oh, yeah. son... That's what set her off, is apparently... I was attacking her child with right. that comment. Hey, knock it off. Right. No, that comment, like, I stand behind that comment. That comment was 100% an attack on how unsupportive she is. Well, the kicker is she puts my comment on there, and I have to laugh. Because my comment was she told me she doesn't understand what trans is and then told me about her child that she didn't understand them. She described that in... In, in in lengthy sentences that she said she does not understand it. She doesn't know what it is. She doesn't understand it. She yeah, puts it in the own post worse. and then gets pissed at me because that's exactly what she told me, which is exactly what she's going on in this post earlier. She literally says it. Uh, where is that? Let's see. That's uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, Hold on. I think it's here. Um, hold on. So before I squirrel around again, so I was saying, I don't think she's like delusional is not the word I want to use, but I think she is so let's go with egotistical. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with egotistical. I think she is so egotistical that she believes like she has said this over and over and over so much. I think she honestly believes the things she's saying. Oh yeah. I Pathological liars. Like, what you're, you're looking so for. You? Pathological liars. What you're thinking of. Um, by the way, after she yelled at me for, for posting that, she says, and I quote, at this child, at this time, my child identifies as non bear, but non-binary and even told me tonight, blah, 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 blah. Do I struggle with it? Yes. Because no, I don't understand it. And they got mad at me because I think that's exactly, I said, she said that she, that they are, and she don't understand it. And she put it on there. Like it was some big, huge bash. She just said it. She just said it in her own words. Right. But she's mad at me for doing, for, for saying exactly what she said. Make it make sense. You know, she started, she started all of this, you know, um, this is, uh, let's see, I'm, uh, let's see, um, this is 100% uncalled for. I'm glad my child is going to stand up for you on their own. Um, uh, I am who I, you know, what's frustrating is when I, when she first started, she, actually, she didn't even listen to my story about my kids. She was too busy yelling at hers to listen to me speak. And I had to stop numerous times to say, we good. But she, as she did with everything, it was, oh, I understand. I understand. I have the same things, blah, blah, blah. And she was telling me about all of these, ah. these things that had happened with her child that were similar the, as mine. And she told me about the violence that her child had given her and the violence she had given her child, et cetera. And then for her to go on and try to blast me when she literally said the same things about her kid, but it wasn't to that level, whatever that means. Um, you know, it's, it's insane to me, the things that come out of her mouth. And then to say that, that Courtney berated her when in the text in Patreon that she uploaded in a drive to Patreon absolutely state that she was threatening to do it, would not do it, and then give us a guilt trip about the fact that she was, that she had, you know, uh, that, what was it, that she's such a hindrance for being on the planet, apparently. It is in Patreon. If you have the Patreon, 
go look because it's in there. I read it to you guys. It's in Patreon. Every fucking thing that she says she hasn't done, she just, she in here she said that she never said that Brie was a man. I have that uploaded to my YouTube. It's what? uploaded to my YouTube. On the channel that I'm on right now on YouTube. Go look. Like, I don't, she's literally, like, she talks about receipts all the time, right? And she's literally doing things that leave a literal receipt. Man, I use that word a lot. Um, <laughs> she is doing things that leave an actual receipt she's going on to lives she's put posting stuff on social media there's a thing called screen record you know there's there's proof of the things she's saying and doing and i don't understand how she can keep flip-flopping and saying oh i never said that here's what i actually said and literally twist her own words to know what she said one of the one of the first ones that she did was we have her on video she says Oh, you know, and I, I have it duetted on uh, Ryan.Lee.TM. She said that I called her an alcoholic. And then she was like, I never said Ryan said that. I never said Ryan said that. I said somebody said I that. Like seven seconds later, tops? Yeah, so I never said that. No, I did not. I never said that. Where did I say that? No, I didn't. You're on video, bro. Right. Yeah, no, she, it, you know, and then to sit here and act like she's a victim that, that we all came at her. Here's the problem. When when Tori and Brandy and me and Christy and Titania and all these people, even fucking nasty at this point, when we all have the same fucking stories happen to us and there's a common denominator and its name is April, what the hell does that say? What the hell does this tell you? We can't all just have made this shit up. I did not know Tori, Brandy, Natasha, or Christy till three days afterwards. Till right. three days. Tori can tell you. I can show you fucking receipts. I literally, I think I went live talking about this February 16th or 17th. They did not reach out to me till the 17th or the 18th. Whatever, whatever day was after. I never knew these people. I could not have known their stories to come up with it. I went on that live of my own volition, talked about my own things, and then they reached out to me. How could I have the same fucking story as them and not speak to them until a day or two later? Make it make sense to right. me, please. Exactly. But she has to be the victim in everything. She's so good at putting herself into that role. She is so good at it. She doesn't ever see where she isn't the victim in something. No, ever. she's the victim in all of this. We're all coming at her. We're all stalking her. We're all harassing her. We're all bullying her. And it's like, bro, you have went on lives and literally said that I abuse my abuser. She has contacted my abuser. Contacted. Like, there is, like, see, I was cool, like, when it was just, like, slinging mud, like, you know, she's mad at me, I'm mad at her, like, I was dealing, I was like, whatever, you know, she, she's like, mad, whatever, like, but yeah, when you do that, when you cross like, that line, when you cross that line, no, and each one of us had a situation where we were just like, fuck it, for me, it was, it was reaching out to my abuser, for Courtney, it was when April, by the way, here's another one for you guys, want to talk about outing shit? When she uploaded all of that shit into Patreon, she put Courtney's unaliving attempt into Patreon. Y'all paid for country, for Courtney's unaliving story that was not out there, that was private, that she trusted her with. She put it on Patreon and made y'all pay for it. That was Courtney's fucking line. And that's Courtney's story to tell if Courtney wants it told. She didn't. And not only did not only did she get outed by April, y'all paid for it. You paid for my friend's fucking trauma. Right? Like, that's the sick part to me is so many of these people are out here. They see all this stuff going on and they're willing to pay her for this crap. Like, they're willing to pay her to continue this crap. I don't understand that. Like, people make me so sick sometimes because 
you know Obviously, what? If they're supporting this when they when they're paying for the Patreon. Now, I, okay, I do understand that there's a few that are literally like going and paying so that they can have access to record it all and put it all out there for free so people don't have to pay. I understand that. But those that are paying because they want the juicy gossip, they want the tea, that makes me sick. Like, why? I owe you guys. And, wait, what? I was wondering... <laughs> Okay, um, I want to apologize to you guys because the thing was, again, I was drinking the Kool-Aid in deep and I want to, I want to apologize to you guys because I pushed that Patreon and I told her to put it down to a dollar because Christy was getting all of her shit knocked down and was trying to block the people from the truth. And I thought that the only way that any of this would ever work is to listen to April, put it all in Patreon, so you guys actually had access to the things that she could prove, which was the stalking, the harassment. She was like, I'm putting it all in there. I'm putting everything that Christy's ever done to me in there. And I'm like, well, she's obviously trying to shut you down. Put it in there, charge a buck, just to show people what's going on. And that's not what it was. And if you guys had any idea the hundreds of dollars that she gets by with, with this fucking Patreon, you'd fucking cancel it pretty damn quick. Right? What she has in that Patreon, looking back now, I feel like an asshole. Because in the beginning, because she spun this thing, well, she signed those records over to me. They're mine. It's okay. I, you know, I, they gave them to me, yada, yada, yada. And I was under this impression that it was something fucking, I, I thought they handed them to Like, I don't fucking know what my stupid ass brain thought. But what I realize now, what I realize now is she has somebody else's whole ass medical records behind a paywall. She has other people's sensitive trauma induced stories behind a paywall. She has somebody's when she put those crime scene photos out there, guys, I had never looked at them until the night that I was on there with you guys. I had never looked at them. I had the drive. I had the drive. Okay. I had it and I didn't look at it. She kept getting on my ass to look at it, read the case files. Yeah. 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 Well, that night that I got on there with the crime scene photos, she put Dee Dee's whole naked body in those crime scene photos her whole body every part of her is in those crime scene photos with no regard for the dignity that that woman got taken from her with no no respect for the family there is every part of that woman completely unclothed in those crime scene photos that y'all are paying for that she put out there my mother's body out like that like respect she wants to talk in that post about morals and stuff well, really because where are hers yeah can you imagine if, because uh, I'm going to give you a story and it's not the same thing but I'm going to tell you to, to, to relay something here Okay, so I was scrolling on Facebook. I have I have a friend, and um, her her dad and my mom were good friends. And every year around his his death anniversary, she posts a really nice photo of him with my mom. I was not expecting this. I'm scrolling down Facebook. My mom has passed, and I scroll through Facebook, and there's my mom's beautiful smiling face, and it sends me just I'm cr like out of nowhere. I did not expect my mom. I'm crying, and it was it was a beautiful post. But it, 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 it shocked me. Like, I, there's my mom. She's, you know, she's dead. She's passing here. She is smiling with her beautiful face. Can you imagine going on Reddit and seeing your whole ass parent's dead fucking body out there for everybody? I had no idea when I looked in those fucking files. No idea at all. Oh, wow, Kendall. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. She's already got nailed once for fraud, for trying to get financial aid that she didn't need. Yeah, she should probably, uh, Patreon is technically a, I mean, Patreon is technically a job. It is whatever, I guess. I don't know. I know that you can't have certain amount of income. I know you can't have certain amount of income. So, I mean, could she be violating something? Probably. I don't know. Um, That, you know, but what she's done is, is irreprehensible. You know, I did not realize till that night that there was photos of every part of that woman. Every part of her. Not clothed. I had no idea. 
And it, I can't even imagine, like, I seen my mom's beautiful smiling face and cry. Can you imagine what it'd be like to be just, you know, surfing on like Reddit or whatever? Be like, oh, well, what do they have? I don't know. Morbid curiosity. And see your parent like that. Like, right. that is, that is I, wild. I, I mean, I understand human nature, morbid curiosity. I get that. But to post it like that is, it's disgusting. You know, and, and to sit here and say that she's such a victim. She's got somebody's somebody's naked body behind a Patreon paywall. She's got somebody's unaliving story on the, on the back of a paywall. She has doxxed nine people in the story that I just told you of outing people's last names that don't want them to be done. She has outed a person in the LGBTQ com community that did not want to be outed. She has told abusers or told people that were abused that they are the abusers. And you guys, uh, she's a victim. Where the hell is she a victim? Because I'm just seeing a bunch of shit that shows she that that, that she's not. Right? Like Brandy and I both have only responded in all of this drama stuff when she has attacked us first. Like we sat quiet for months. And then last month, I think it was last month. I don't think it was January. I don't think it's been that long. Might have been. But if it was, it was the end of January. We did that live, the It's All a Distraction. And all of that was only to address the lies that she was spreading about us. Like, every time we have said something, that's all it is. It's been to address the lies that she was saying. And we have brought the proof. And, and you did it tastefully, though. Times. And but you did it tastefully. Tried, exactly. And we have tried over and over to say, look, you have a problem with us. We'll open the floor. We will handle this like grown-ass adults. We will handle this respectfully. Come and talk to us. Tell us what we did wrong. Tell us how we stole something. Tell us, you know, all of those things. Let's have an adult conversation instead of this bullshit lies back and forth shit. Brandy, if you want to get... not woman enough to do that. Brandy, if you want to hop over here on TikTok and get in the damn box, get in the damn box. She's over there getting pissed on YouTube. Get over here. Get in the box. YouTube can hear you. Say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. Get over here. I'll let you in here too. You know, it's frustrating to me because I allowed somebody to essentially fill my head that all these people were garbage human beings. Not that she had done what she had done to them. Not that she had done anything. And, and to know these people now is, it, it, it's frustrating because... I see so much of what happened to me with them and that I believe that bullshit just like you guys fucking believed it on me. Just like some of you still believe it on me. Everything that I've done, everything that I've done has been in response. I came on here the first night crying, upset. I lost my friend and to not harass her, not put mean comments. And here we are now trying to have to defend ourselves every way, tooth and fucking nail. Because of why? Because she keeps saying that she that she's not the problem. She didn't do anything. She did everything. She's done it all. Every fucking thing that could have been done, she's done. And it's ridiculous. And we're all fucking and we're all blamed for it because she's never the problem. Uh-uh, if you guys want to be in here, you're not going to be doing that. No. No. They don't want to play now. <laughs> That's another reason I'm outside. I have three dogs, and one of them is a puppy. We call her Demon Dog because she's she's just rough. Right, oh, Alex. my God. Alex, my on. older two, my older two dogs Run. are older. Yeah. They're like, how old are they? 12 and 9, Run. I think. And then there's the like 16 month old puppy who literally will leap over the couch when she's excited. So I think it's a little crazy with my dogs too. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's see. Oh, is, is Brandy coming? Oh, oh shit. Sorry. I don't even know who the hell that person right. is. Oh, that's Brandy. We're good. We're good. I, I hope, I hope she's here and I'm, I hope she's here in all of this. I hope you are sitting here. I hope that you pop off on Facebook with everything in you. We call her demon dog. Go ahead. What happened? We're, and like, I lost everybody. Is everybody there? I'm here. Okay. I'm still here. Brandy? <laughs> oh, no. She dropped. Yeah, she'll come back. 
Give um, me a second. Okay, so Juniper, if you think you okay, so we're we're gonna do this. So it, do you think if you just stop giving them and do your thing, the Blanchers will? Become, I don't even know what you were asking at that point. Never mind. Um, it was muted. I didn't mean to. Come come back up. Come back up. Um. Aren't I working with the Blanchards now? Me being friends with Christy is not working with the... You guys act like there is a mafia. That Christy is some mafia head boss. And we're all working for her. And we're all her little her little people. And she points us in a direction. And we spin off in that direction. Christy is a normal ass human being like the rest of us. I, I'm not really sure. Yeah, you know, this This isn't... This is... This isn't, Go ahead. I think she said something about scrolling. I have like two unfollowed. I just read this account. Like, yeah, I know. I think it's funny. So I can't like always follow along. But I think that her. I think for her, she needs, she needs that attention. And it, it, it's almost like a little kid. Like, my three year old, if you want to be the I'm alive, I love to make sure I love them. And young, he's like, bully. Like, you I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Yeah, she started breaking up. She started breaking up. Um, I, she, I know she's outside or whatever. Um, okay. So Jen, here's the thing though. Here's the thing, you know, um, okay. Again, here's another thing. Juniper, all these people saying, well, if you just stop giving this drama life, you know what? Here's the deal. Each morning for the past two mornings now, I've woken up to me and my friends being smeared in, in, in text posts this fucking long. It took me a half hour, 45 minutes to read the post on here because it was so long. Okay. I don't care about views. You know what I did? Literally. I, because I'm so tired of people coming in and, and acting like I'm some type of horrible person. I took an hour out of my day yesterday and I went and anybody that was following a snark page that ran a snark page, I blocked them. I lost 200 followers. <laughs> I didn't care. I went through and I took followers off my list. If I was doing this for for followers or or whatever, I sure as hell wouldn't remove 200 followers off of two of my accounts. Off of two of my accounts. If I cared about that enough, I didn't get everyone. Probably not. Probably not. And even if I did get main accounts, there's always going to be burners. And I'm aware of that. But what I did do is get a vast majority out of them. And that's all I care about. Um, you know, Juniper, there, there's such a thing as people who want attention no matter how, how bad the attention is. As long as they have attention, they're relevant. They're relevant. And, you know... um. It's, it's ridiculous, you know, and then now me, me and a few others have snark pages at us for what sticking up for ourselves. Like that, that's what it's come to now. Uh, April has done all this to all these people. And now we have snark pages because, because we choose to defend ourselves because every day we wake up to another thing. You know, she went on this big ass long diatribe again today. And we're just supposed to sit over and take it because that's what, that's what, that's what's happened for so long is you just let people to do, you just let people do whatever. Well, you know what? It'll just go away. It hasn't gone away yet. Wish it would. Wish it would. And she will Sig. she will. She's good. She's moved on to Sarah right now. And Sarah will learn. Sarah will learn. They did make one for court. They did. So now I have, a, I have a couple snark pages. Court's got one now. Bree's probably next. And they're just going to continue to hate on people for trying to write things, for trying to defend things, for trying to show what, ac what accurately happened. No, she hasn't turned on Sarah yet. 
She will. Well, but Sarah is a really good ass kiss. So and, and until Sarah stands up for herself, she'll have no reason. She'll have no reason to. Uh, Brie has one? Where? I didn't know she had one. I I told I know how this works because it happened to me before. And so I I already told I told them I, I said, you know, I said I got mine. I said court's coming next, then Brie will be after her, and it's exactly what's fucking happening. That's just how that's just uh her account just got blocked on TikTok. Well, I know she was making a new one. I know I know Bree's making a new one. Um and yeah. That, that's the Sarah I'm talking about, Chickabon. Yes, the one with the big pink hat. Yeah, she don't want to fuck with me neither. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that out there right now. If you're, if you're in here, Sarah, you don't, you don't, you, you really, really don't. And I'm just putting that out there for you, because if you put my ass against a wall, we've all seen what happens. And I already got the goods on you, and you don't want that shit out there. Trust me. Her backup, I think she was in here on the backup. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. A snark page is something that people make. Um, like with my snark pages, like for instance, you see um, Ryan Lee's snark page come in. Or um, there's like Free the Vape, Free the free the Vape 2, um, Don't Eat Me Ryan. Um, and what they'll do is they'll make posts of either parts of my lives or they will um take cartoons um der like derogatory cartoons yeah like do the roar and they'll uh and they'll post them and 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 it's juvenile third grade bully crap you know what i mean um yeah i would love for sarah to come on here and read her own facebook posts of calling bria a trans warthog um, and you know, I have, I have numerous ones up, um, but Ryan, I'm there. I'm where, where am I? I'm where? Oh, I know. I'm aware, Jen. Why do you think people come in saying do the roar? I'm aware. I am very aware. That's what they have on me. That's what they have on me is apparently I resemble a little character from Shrek, which is why they come in saying do the roar. That's what they have. Of all the things that I've done, all the things, all the things that I've done, that I've said, whatever, what they have is do the roar. Like, that's it. That's what they have. It's, it's so amazing that, that you, you want to cut me down by using a Disney movie. That's what you have is to make little, little cartoons. I mean, go look at, go look at Natasha's Natasha, who has, who has made it also her, her, whatever that she's one after me. On her true crime page, a true crime page, she has a picture of what's supposed to be me on her page. And it's a picture of this not very good looking um, cartoon with all my piercings. It's all my piercings. And um, she actually, on her own true crime page, Decided to put something up that a eight-year-old would bully with. I'm sure she is live about me now. She is she she means nothing to me. She is a vile human being. She puts dead babies behind paywalls as well. She has 785 call-out videos on YouTube from everything from a scammer to a bully to a doxer. I that type of person has to have somebody to pick on. And She's just not worth it to me. Like, let her do what she's going to do. I don't care about Natasha. She talks about the fact of my little profile and my little views. I'm on my little, this is the littlest account that I use, and I have twice the amount. Her lives get a, a third or half. She says that, she, that, that I'm getting views off of her. I think it's the other way around. And it upsets her. It, it upsets her uh, immensely that I talked to Christy. Because that's when it started. It started when I started talking to Christy and Christy said she didn't talk to her and she got very upset. She has picked apart my piercings, my tattoos, my job, my sexuality, my weight. She decided to say what goes on in my bedroom like she fucking knows. 
And she says that I'm not credible because I have piercings and I work at a pizza place. I don't even see where that girl works and spends most of her time grifting money off of people. Go on to YouTube. Go look all over GoFundMes. At least I make an earnest, uh, honest, earnest living. Okay, so you without me, she wouldn't be able to sit on her couch 24-7 because people like me make the food that gets delivered to her. So I don't really know what to say. I'm not, trust me, the Ryan, Ryan, Ryan 2022 would have been banned already because don't think it has not been on my mind to literally open a live with my face painted like a clown. Also, not only my face painted like a clown, but put it up like this so that you guys can see me all the time really, really up close while I sit and body shame and bash people. And you know why she does it like this? Because she is worried about her problems and her insecurities. So she wants to take them out on me. She wants to weight bash me. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I could do all those things. I could meet her at her level and win. Trust me, I'm a petty bitch. I'm petty and I'm rude and I could I could beat her at her own fucking game easily. If I really wanted to if I wanted to meet her at her level, she's went to low and I would go to hell. Okay? The things that what that I would say that would come out of my mouth would make me a very very bad person. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to think it. But I'm not going to do it. Because that is not who I am. I'm not going to do that. So she can sit and do these lives and, and trash me as much as she wants. Yes, she's uh, I believe the post that she put with with a, with the pit with the unflattering character with my piercings says when an ugly fat girl calls you fat. I believe that's what it is. I'm not really sure. Um, you know, you guys can do whatever you want to do. But what I can tell you is this. I'm not going to... I'm not going to partake in that. She can say whatever she wants. She can do whatever she wants to do. I will just remind all of you that do happen to follow both her and I that she has 785 call-out videos for scamming, grifting, bullying, doxing, paywalling dead babies that if you want to partake with a person like that, you do you. Just stay the hell away from me. She's going after me because everything was fine. She actually reached out to me. She was being a nice human being. And she had been saying she was talking to Christy. Christy was in my life. And Christy said, I don't talk to her. And that's when it started. She started going on and on about how I don't even know. She blah, 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 blah. And, and her piercings and her tattoos and, and whatever. And if that's what you have on me, if, if that's what you have, what 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 does paywalling dead babies mean? A family asked her not to release the autopsy photos of a child and they, she put them in Patreon. They asked her not to release them. So not only did she release them, but you had to pay to see them. You can go on YouTube. You can, you can go down a rabbit hole. Go down or just type in Natasha Cooper into your YouTube. It, 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 it'll explain it for you. They are the same people. Natasha and April are the same people. They're the same people. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I tried to support all of you and stay in my lane, but court informed me of some stuff I didn't know. Well, I could have told you that. Yes, the Gannon case. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, it, and the thing is, um, there is a petition to get Natasha Cooper off social media permanently. 135 people signed it. Unfortunately, it's from 2022. Um, she, uh, no, she doubled down on, uh, no, she never, she didn't just, no, I did not, I, I, I see, say yes, if you saw that, um, I did not see it in the chat. So message me again. Um, yeah, she has, she has those, um, behind a paywall and she doubled down and said that, oh, wow. Well, damn. What time is it? Oh, you're doing good. Damn. Okay. Well, apparently, um, how, how, would you want me to leave in five minutes or 10 minutes or now or what? Um, 
After the dad didn't go to court that day to see his son's photo, she posted them to YouTube. Yeah. Leave in 10 minutes. Okay, it is 11.33, which means I will leave at 11.43, 11.45. I'll leave in like 12 minutes, but okay. Um, okay, yeah, it's the same. They are both, they both ask for money. They both grift. They both put dead people behind Patreon. They both play the victim. If you're not seeing, oh, Christy just joined. I am going to be leaving here in 10 minutes. And no, Natasha's not April. Natasha's not April. Um, my dogs are making me lose my mind. Um, unfortunately, Christy, you came in at the end ass end of everything that I had had to talk about. Um, I don't know if I'm coming back tonight. I may or may not. I'm not sure. Um, but um, I, I, I might come back live. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I have to see. Um, who is Starlight? It's not Sarah. No, it's not Sarah. People mess up what you say so bad. Hold on. Not literally the same people. They act the same. Yeah. Well, um, I will, I will, I will try to come back. I have to see what goes on with my husband and these dogs are driving me insane. Um, yes, you guys, if you want to, if you have, if you've come in late, my live is going to be on YouTube. Um, I have decided I'm going to start doing lives at the same time. That way my lives are recorded so people can go back and enjoy them later. Um, that'd be a decline. Um, Starlight is, okay, so I just want to say this. I'm going to leave you guys with this. Um, I don't have a thought in my head about Starlight, but I will tell you this. Because of Starlight, now there's a rumor going around on Reddit that I shit myself on a bus in 11th grade. I would love to know how she would ever have known anything that like that that would have ever happened. It didn't, just so you know. But apparently because of Hello Starlight, she thought it was something funny. Um, court ended up getting on her and saying that it was ridiculous. And because of that, now I believe there's a, a user on Reddit that got shown to me. Again, I did not go there. That is called Shit Stain Stacy. Um, pretty sure it's attached to Thea in some way. I know. There goes my rabbit hole. Thea is my Blanchards, you guys. Thea is my Blanchards. Except I have, like, actual stuff on her. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, Starlet. She came in and, um, <laughs> right, Sarah? Um, oh, there's one I missed. There's one I missed. There we go. So, there's another one. Block that one. There's another one. So, um, I have a few more minutes left. Yeah, Thea gets on my nerves. Um, absolutely, she gets on my nerves, too. Somebody came in my messenger today trying to say, they were like, do you know who Crime Talk News is? And I'm like, why? And they're like, because she's doing videos of my family, and I just want to know who she is. And I'm like, go message her then. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'm not stupid. She changed it. It's like Phoenix, Phoenix Rising Crime Talk, I want to say. Something like that. Um, I will say um, there is there is ample rumor going around that I am Crime Talk News parody. Um, honestly, as much as I hate snark, as much as I hate snark pages, um, I had to laugh when that one was made. I actually know the person behind it. Um, I did not tell them to do it. They came to me. That's how I know them. Um, they came to me and told me that they were running it. And, uh, she, she, she is losing her mind about this person. And it's fun to watch, to be honest, because again, Thea is also a horrible person. She is also a horrible, horrible person. And I mean a horrible person. Um, you guys have no idea. Um, I, I've gone into her on occasion. Um, if she keeps going on with her bullshit, I may do it again. I have a YouTube now. I have zero qualms with putting all your public records out there for everybody to enjoy. Thea, April, Sarah. I don't give a shit. I've ran my shit. I know what's in there. I know what's in my shit. Go run, go pay and go, go pay and get my shit done. I don't give a fuck. There ain't nothing in there. I ain't got I ain't got one goddamn criminal nothing. I ain't got a criminal nothing. I've lived in five places and I ain't got a criminal nothing. I'm boring as fuck. I am the most boring background report you've ever seen in your life. Congratulations. But you guys, you guys, god damn. 
You guys, you guys are getting picked up for shit, it seems like, all the time. You've all lived in 30 to 50 places. You all have no less than, what, 15 court appearances? You all love to f do fraud and hot checks. Like, it's wild. Has the true crime community always been this way? I have no fucking idea. I'm not even going to say some of the worst charges, Patricia, because I'm going to tell you there was a fucking doozy I'm sitting on. I got two bankruptcies. That, that is on my background report. I have two of those. Mm -hmm. They All three of them do, too. So, I mean, it is. I think at this point, I think at this point, the entirety of the United States is declared bankruptcy at this point. Um, you will find that on me. Somebody came in and tried to out it once. Oh, you have a bankruptcy. I'm like, bitch, I got two. <laughs> I got two. What do you like? What? I got two. My husband got hurt at work. We went through our life savings in like 11 months. He was out for 11 months. We went through our life savings, bro. I, yeah, I declared bankruptcy. Second time, we moved hours and hours away. Took a pay cut. Yeah, I did it again. Fuck you. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Shit happens, and I don't, I don't ream them for their bankruptcies. We all have financial issues. I'm not going to ream them for that. What I am going to ream them for is to go on here and say that they don't have those things. They didn't do these things. Did you want them? I don't even know who they are. Oh wait, what? You got banned from common? I didn't ban. I've been the fuck. The only person I've kicked out was Do the Roar. Literally, I just kicked out Do the Roar and then Ryan Snark page. Those are the only people that have been touched this entire life. My hands have been here. The fuck are you talking about? Oh, TikTok did. Why? <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Sometimes TikTok is like, fuck you, you can't comment. Oh shit. I oh no, I still got I still got three minutes. I said I was leaving at, at eleven forty three, rounded to eleven forty five. I still got at least three minutes. Um um, okay, so Heather, no, 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 let me, no, let, no, let me set you straight on that. She has been in the military as a military information intelligence specialist. She is a retired holistic doctor. She makes her own um, beauty products. Um, she um, is a baker. Uh, she is a private investigator. And all these people are going after her on Reddit telling her to show her DD-214 and she won't. She won't. Oh, that's okay, Rusty. That's fine. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I said she makes her own beauty projects. Yeah, and she sits first. Yeah, um, she she's single hand. No, this is Theo. Oh, Reddit's gonna watch this, you guys. Watch, 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 watch. Okay, I can tell you this. Reddit's gonna get real fucking wild after this because every time I talk about Thea afterwards. Reddit gets extremely heated from what I hear. For the people that I know who go on it. Just so you know. See, because I do get sent things from other people. About other people, not me. Because I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see nothing about me. Fuck that. Don't send, don't send me shit on me. I don't want to see that. But, um, seems like a few accounts on Reddit get real mad when I talk about the not just like one, like a handful, you know. Um, so I think I think that that's quite fun. So yeah, Thea, like, how's the how's the RV court? How's how's the RV park? I gotta know. Is it cool? The street view of it. I mean, it it looks like you know whatever, but it's pretty nifty if you think about it. Sorry to hear that you didn't win the lawsuit against your husband's brother, though. That must have been very unfortunate for you. When I say I have it all, I have it all. Fun times. But she just still wants to come at me, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's too you guys are great, though. Thanks for giving me the warnings. I have two minutes. Uh, yeah, I'm dropping the tea and then I'm going to bounce. Absolutely, that's what I do. Um, expect expect all social media to be real fucking late after that. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to come back afterwards. I think I'm going to try to come back afterwards. I got to see what's going on with my husband. Um, yeah, 
Thea needs to stay in her lane. It's going to be hard. She's got a lot of traffic violations, but she should definitely should stay in her lane. Um, it cost her a lot less money, but uh, yeah. So, right, Jessica? Uh, where am I going? Where am I going? I I'm going somewhere. I got to pick up my husband from work. I got to I got to go pick up my husband from work. So um, it is 1143. And if I don't get off of here, he's going to freak out because he's got to come home and get some stuff done. Uh, we have some guests coming over in the morning. He's going to play some D&D. &D. He's super excited about D&D. &D. Um, so I may be coming back live on when I get home. I may be. I might be. Um, we'll see. So um, thank you guys for being amazing. I'm sure social media is going to be blowing the fuck up after my live. I'm sure April is going to go on a diatribe. Um, if you guys want to watch my live, it is on YouTube. Um, expect Reddit to be pissed because I just said some shit about Thea. Expect April to be pissed because I said shit about April. And expect Natasha to be pissed because I might have said you have 785 call-out videos of being a vile ass human being. So, there you go. Everybody can hate me all they want. I've earned it. And God damn it, when I earn it, I'm going to earn it. I'm actually going to earn it. Kendall, feel free to do to take any of these stories and run with them on your wonderful channel. Everybody go follow Kendall. She is an amazing artist. Um, feel free to take my gremlin voice off of YouTube. I have no problem with that. Um, and all of my theatrical readings, go to my YouTube, get my AI voice, do whatever you'd like. I really don't care. If you need my voice for any of your platforms, feel free to go to my YouTube, take my voice. I don't care. Um, what you do is amazing. And, and she's got a real talent for this, you guys. She's really, really good. Um, I will say her best one, my favorite one of, of all time is Judge Judy. If you guys don't watch any of her work, watch Judge Judy because I watched the whole thing in my head. Well, it happened. It was amazing. She is Kendall. I am going right now. It is Kendall Grant right there, guys. Kendall Grant, go give her a follow. Go, go give her some love. Go watch all of her amazing, amazing TikToks. I got to go. Maybe I'll be back. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. I got to go. Hopefully, I'll be back.